In this chapter, we will discuss how the elements are organized in the periodic table. In the periodic table shown at the top, the elements are arranged by increasing atomic number. There are seven rows or periods. Each period corresponds to a principal energy level. The properties of the elements in a given period change as you move from left to right across the period. This pattern of change repeats as you move from one period to the next. The periodic table is usually shown in two parts. The lanthanide, symbol LA, series, elements 57 to 70, and the actinide, symbol AC, series, elements 89 to 102, are shown separately, otherwise the table is too wide. Periodic tables are sometimes color-coded to classify certain kinds of elements. Here, a different color is used to distinguish between metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. Most elements are metals, about 80%. A metal is an element that is a good conductor for heat and electricity. Metals are also ductile, malleable, and shiny. Ductility is a physical property of metals that describes their ability to stretch, pull, or be bent into a thin wire or thread without breaking. Malleable means that a metal can be shaped under pressure without breaking. A nonmetal is an element with properties opposite to metals. A metalloid is an element with some properties common to metals and some in common with nonmetals. Typically, metalloids have metallic appearances but they are usually brittle and only mediocre electricity conductors. Chemically, these elements usually behave as nonmetals. Let's pick an element from the periodic table. What information is shown for each square? At the top, is the atomic number. Below the atomic number, we have the symbol of the element. Below the element symbol, we can find the name of the element, in this case lithium. The number at the bottom is the atomic mass of the element. This diagram classifies elements into blocks based on the electrons in the highest occupied energy sublevels. This is very useful to determine the electron configuration of an element. Let's take nickel as an example. Nickel is in period 4, so it has 4 occupied energy levels. It has 28 electrons, since it has atomic number 28. Since nickel is in the D block, the 4S block must be filled. Find the D8 label above nickel's group. These electrons are in energy level 3, considering the energy levels of the orbitals. Add 3 D8 to the electron configuration, and there you go. Groups are columns in the periodic table. Elements in groups 1a through 7a are the representative elements. The s and p sublevels of the highest occupied energy level are not filled completely. Let's look at a couple of examples. Lithium has a 2s sublevel that is not completely filled, only one electron. The same for sodium. There is only one electron in the sublevel with the highest energy. Transition elements are divided into transition metals and inner transition metals. A transition metal is one of the group B elements in the periodic table. An inner transition metal is an element in the lanthanide or actinide series. What is the electron configuration of noble gases? Noble gas is an element in group 8A of the periodic table. Noble gases are also called inert gases because they rarely take part in chemical reactions. Look at the highest occupied energy level of four noble gases in the table. In each case, the S and P sublevels are completely filled with electrons. How does the atomic size vary in a period? Let's have a look at the atomic radius, which is defined as one half of the distance between the nuclei of two atoms of the same element when the atoms are joined. The unit of length used for the atomic radius is the picometer, which is a metric unit. In the figure above, the atomic radius is plotted as function of the atomic number. Clearly, a periodic trend can be observed. Atomic size decreases from left to right across a period. Within a group, the atomic size increases from top to bottom. Let's have a look at ions. An ion is an atom or group of atoms that has a positive or negative charge. A cation is an ion with a positive charge. 
An anion is an ion with a negative charge. An atom is electronically neutral because the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons. Positive or negative ions form because electrons are transferred between atoms. Let's have a look at the sodium atom. The sodium atom has 11 protons and 12 neutrons in its nucleus. If a sodium atom loses one electron, it becomes a positive sodium ion. The energy required to remove an electron from an atom is called the ionization energy. If we look to the figure, which shows the first ionization energy versus the atomic number, we can identify the following trends. Within a period, when we move from lithium to neon, the first ionization energy generally increases. Within a group, when we compare helium, neon, argon and krypton, we notice that the first ionization energy generally decreases. What are the trends in ionic size? 1. Cations. When an atom loses an electron, the attraction between the remaining electrons and the nucleus increases, so the electrons are drawn closer to the nucleus. So a positive ion, or cation, is smaller than the atom from which it was formed. 2. Anions. When an atom gains an electron, the attraction between the nucleus for any one electron decreases, so the anions are larger than the atoms from which they form. Let's compare the size of the anions for nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine, which are elements from period 2. We notice that the size of the anions decreases when we move from left to right across a period. Trends. Within a group, the size of an ion generally increases from top to bottom in the periodic table. Within a period, the size of an ion generally decreases when moving from left to right across a period. What are the trends in electronegativity? Electronegativity is the ability of an atom to attract electrons when the atom is in a compound. Electronegativity is a useful property to predict the kind of bond that will form. The different kinds of bonds will be discussed in later chapters. Look at the electronegativity values for some selected elements. Within a group, moving from top to bottom, the values generally decrease. Within a period, moving from left to right, the electronegativity values generally increase. Atoms want to be stable because they have less energy when they are stable. Stable atoms have all the orbitals filled with electrons. To achieve this, atoms may lose or gain electrons. This can lead to a stable electron configuration similar to a noble gas.